There's a lot of confusion about carbonated water. Should I run from the hill? Should I drink it? Is it healthy? What is the deal? So in this video, I'm going to clear up some myths that make people kind of scared of carbonated water, but I'm also going to explain how some people can benefit from drinking carbonated water while some people really should avoid drinking it. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now there's a lot of carbonated waters that contain sugars and sweeteners and flavors and all this kind of garbage that people can put in a drink. And I'm not talking about that. In this video, we're just going to talk about water with carbonation in it. So we're not going to add all the floofy fluffy because a lot of that stuff really is not fit for human consumption and you probably shouldn't be drinking it. Liquid sugars is really not a beneficial thing to drink. But if we're just talking about carbonated water, let's first knock out some of these myths that may have people avoiding it. And one of them is some people feel like it could magnify some IBS symptoms maybe because of the bubbles, because of that can create some gas. But it really just creates gas in the stomach. And if you're dealing with excess gas, we'll put a video in the description below this video that you can link to and go check that out and understand how to correct any kind of uh, digestive gas that you may be dealing with. Some people will also say that it can magnify acid reflux and they kind of believe this is true because of the acidic factor of carbonated water. And they feel like, oh, if you're going to raise those acids, you're going to magnify your acid reflux. And acid reflux is not caused from having too much stomach acid. If you don't understand that, we'll put a link to our acid reflux video that explains that acid reflux comes from not having enough acid. But another cause of acid reflux can be some type of bacterial overgrowth in the stomach. And this bacteria can create gases and pressure, and that pressure can push your food back up and cause reflux. So if you're putting bubbly water in your stomach and this is the situation for you, you really could magnify that problem and you really could magnify the acid reflux. But again, the acid reflux is not caused by the carbonated water. You should take steps to fix the acid reflux and then the carbonated water wouldn't be a problem. Now some other myths you might hear is that carbonated water is going to melt your teeth and it's going to melt your bones and it's going to give you ulcers. And people believe these things because carbonated water can be a little bit acidic. Now, carbon dioxide is acidic, but it's not melt your bones acidic. And by the time you put it in water, it's really not that acidic at all. Now, there is some aspects of this carbon dioxide acidity that we're going to talk about that are going to help us understand who really should drink some carbonated water and who might not want to drink some carbonated water. Because the carbon dioxide in this carbonated water can get into the bloodstream and push the bloodstream a little bit more acidic. But this is not a big problem like the pH guru idiots will tell us. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say idiots? Because I meant to say idiots. Because these pH guru idiots tell us that we all need to alkalize or we're going to die by Thursday. And that's just not the reality. Now, there are people who have their blood leaning a little bit too on the acidic side that can create some problems. But that doesn't mean that everyone is leaning too acidic. There's actually a huge percentage of the population that has their blood leaning a little bit too on the alkaline side. So here's what happens. When the blood is leaning too far on the alkaline side, what's called the Bohr effect kicks in. And we all learned about the Bohr effect in eighth grade, but then we forgot all about it. So what the Bohr effect tells us is when the blood leans too alkaline, oxygen can't leave the blood and get down to the tissues where it needs to be. So we can create energy and do all those things that oxygen does. So when the blood's leaning too alkaline, the body will slow the rate at which we breathe in an effort to hold on to more CO2 because CO2 is acidic and can help acidify that bloodstream a little bit so that oxygen can get down to the tissues where it needs to be for crying out loud. So the body is trying to help us out. It's trying to hold on to more of this CO2. So if somebody is leaning too far on this alkaline side in their bloodstream, and keep in mind that our urine pH and our saliva pH is no indication of our blood pH like the pH gurus tell us. There is no correlation there. To understand whether your blood is leaning a little bit too alkaline or too acidic, we can look at our breath rate. It's a really simple test that you can just do at home. Just set a kitchen timer for a minute and count the amount of inhales that you take. Don't count an inhale as one and an exhale as two. Just count the number of times you inhale. 
And if that number falls between around 14 to 18, that's pretty balanced. That's an ideal number, indicating that the blood is probably in a good pH. But if your breath rate is lower than 12, that can be an indication that the blood is leaning too far on that alkaline side and can create oxygen utilization issues. Now, if your breath rate is 20 or over, that can indicate that the bloodstream may be leaning a little bit too on the acidic side. And when this is the case, it can kind of change the way a person is processing fuel. They can kind of rip through their fuel too fast and won't leave any fuel left over for the brain. And when someone's breath rate is really high, they can end up with mental or emotional issues because the brain doesn't have the fuel it needs to function correctly. So if someone has a low breath rate and their blood appears to be leaning too far on that alkaline side, then drinking some carbonated water in the day could really help improve that issue. It could really help your ability to utilize oxygen the correct way. That's kind of a big deal. So this can be a really big plus for someone who's leaning on that low breath rate side. Now, if someone's leaning a little bit too fast, they would really want to avoid carbonated water because they don't want to magnify the problem of the blood leaning a little bit too far on the acidic side. Now, there are some that believe that drinking carbonated water while you eat can restrict the body's ability to assimilate the nutrients in that food. And I can kind of buy into this a little bit. There's not a lot of proof out there that this is actually true but I can kind of buy into the science a little bit. So if you're concerned about that, just drink your carbonated water away from food and you won't have to worry about that issue. Now there's also some that say, oh, my digestion works a lot better when I drink carbonated water than when I don't. And one thing to look at is that sparkling mineral water contains a lot of minerals like chloride that the body uses to make hydrochloric acid. The body needs the mineral chloride to make its stomach acid and help us break down our food correctly. So if somebody's drinking a sparkling mineral water, that could be giving their body more of these resources it needs to properly digest their food. But you can see, just like with anything, it's not about is carbonated water healthy or not. It's really about looking at your unique bioindividuality and understanding how things are going to affect your body chemistry. So if you want to learn more about that, we have a totally free digestion course and we'll put the link to that free course in the description below this video. And that course walks you through some simple self-tests you can do at home with tools you can pick up at a pharmacy or a health food store to give you an idea of where your body chemistry is and if you're dealing with specific imbalances or not. For now, check out our video on the truth about pH balance to kind of knock out some of those other myths about alkalizing and all that kind of stuff and give you some more indications about what can happen when you're leaning a little bit too on the acidic side or a little bit too much on the alkaline side. I can't wait to hear about your results.